And so we got to have someone in positions of power and authority say, this is wrong. You got to have that. Otherwise, the change will not take place. Does that make sense? And so anytime you see clear evidence of bigotry and hatred that lets you and I know we cannot afford to lay down on our watch. One of my biggest concerns right now is that our young people are not paying attention to the history that is unfolding right before their eyes. That concerns me. But watch this. If my young people are not paying attention, this speaks volume of poor parenting. Come on, you can't blame the kids. Come on. See, we don't really have a kid problem. We got a parent problem. Certain things was not optional when I was raising my kids. You had to pay attention to current events. You had to know what's going on on the news. We had family prayer. Nobody left my house in the morning for school without me, my wife, and all the kids, whether they wanted to or not. We gonna pray for you, leave here. Hello? Family meetings were mandatory. Me, my wife, and all of the children, and they didn't like it. But we gonna sit down to the round table and we gonna talk. And my children had a voice, by the way. As long as they voiced that, their voice, I expressed their voice respectfully. Certain things, you, you know, the, the world has a proverb, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I think family prayer is becoming obsolete or has become obsolete. Family meetings, probably obsolete, don't take place anymore. Now the enemy rejoices when things like this happen. Because he understands if he can dismantle the family, you can dismantle society. Our children need to know and understand the political system, how it works, why it's important to vote, who's running for office, what's their platform, how do they see things? Lord help us. So we can't blame the kids. Because children will do what you allow them to. Yes. It's up to parents to set the tone in the home. How that puts it. When I see what's happening when it comes to parenting. It lets me know that we got to step out of our game when it comes to the church. You can't allow yourself to get discouraged, frustrated, throwing a towel and quit. No, it's too much work to be done. <clears throat> the young lady that got killed Saturday night. Gorgeous 17 year old girl. And um, they interviewed her mom. And apparently they had moved to Nebraska and was back in town for the holiday. And she gets shot. And her mama pointed out something that I had missed. 
in the girl's name. Because when her name is spelled backward, it spells heaven. What do you do when your 17 year old has been taken from you? There have been fundraisers uh, to help with funeral experience. The past two funerals that have taken place, fundraisers was necessary for funeral expenses. Why don't we still need to make sure that? I fish. Surely we can afford it. I know we can afford it when I see how many vices we got in our life. If you can afford a pack of cigarettes, surely you can afford it. If you can spend your resources at the club, and the casino, surely you can afford life insurance. Something is wrong. I feel like I just had to give that off the top. I want to encourage you, if you have children, Even if they are adults, you and I already know if they don't have insurance, it's gonna fall in your lap. Am I lying? Nope. Because even if they hard headed, cuss you out, haven't spoken to you in years, if something happened to your child. You don't want them laying up in a morgue. Can't even afford to bury them. So, I think what we need to do is look into getting some life insurance for them because if something happened to them, you know it's going to fall on you. I'm going to teach you good. Amen. The old folks used to say, for as sure as you were born, one day you are going to die. And I feel like I just need to get that right off the top. Amen. Amen. Because too much stuff is happening. Uh, yeah, in our neighborhood, among our people. And uh, I'm very concerned. We gotta do something. We gotta do something because uh, we gotta do something. Maybe we, you know, I, I might have to call the insurance company so can I get a church policy by my children or something. Because I don't want you stressing. Can you imagine you lost your baby and now you got to scrape the pennies to bury your babies? We got to do something. Surely there's a solution. Now maybe you don't think like that, but I do. I think it's, uh, don't say much for us as a church. Someone's name is on the road at our church and we're not thinking ahead. 
okay? I mean, that's just how I think. We, we gotta do something. And, uh, gotta get something in place here. And God forbid that it happen to any of our babies. I pray that that don't. But, I want to be positioned so we can take care of our own if by chance something tragic happens. Does that make sense? Amen. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Come on. <laughs> Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, if you would please. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. Let's go there for our teaching today. And uh, how many of you know that a member of our church is running for city council? How many of you know? Does everybody here know? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. okay I, I, if you don't know, stand up, Regina. Regina is running yes. for city council. Yes. Okay. All right, council lady. And, uh, uh, and I am pushing and supporting her. Glory to God. Uh, let me tell you something. Um, the world of politics has been turned upside down more than once. Amen to that. By what was referred to or called unlikely candidates. Amen to that. Bobby Kennedy said something years ago that was so profound. And he spoke prophetically. He didn't even know how prophetic what he said was. And he said, uh, he, before he got killed, he said, uh, America is moving at such a pace. He said, in 40 years, we could even have a Negro, a black person, as president. It was almost 40 years to the day when President Obama was elected. Glory to God. Now, now, now you got, got to understand, sir, because when he said that, folk that was anti-us thought, well, he must be drunk. Let's just, un let's just be real, because you and I, we really was not ever sure that we would see something like that come to pass during our time. Are y'all still there? Uh, and so, there have been people uh, that didn't have the political clout, uh, the political pull, or influence, and and had had had, had the, uh, the, the, the 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 those that was among who's who in politics ever thought that Abraham Lincoln would do what he was going to do, he would never got elected again. That's Isn't right. That amazing? That's right. First of all, he was too poor and out of, out of touch. He, he was not supposed to win this star with. But God had a plan. Let alone get re-elected or something. So... God has a plan. Uh, don't let nobody convince you what you can't do. We say it again. Don't allow anybody to convince you what you can't do. Glory. Yes, sir. In 19... 97. Excuse me, I take that back. It was 1993. My mentor told me that I was not a pastor. My mentor told me. And when he said it, I said, 
But well, pastor, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying say I'm a pastor nothing like that. I ain't saying nothing like that. I'm just saying that they had asked me about speaking at their church, and I told them that. He Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Well, I take that back. He didn't say I wasn't a pastor. He said you're not a preacher. How wrong he was. I'm teaching now a lot better than you respond. Okay. One of the best things that happened to me is that I didn't know that I couldn't do certain things. <laughs> Let me say it again. I didn't know that I couldn't do it. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know that I I couldn't preach. I didn't know that I couldn't pass up. I didn't know that I, I couldn't own my own business. I didn't know that I couldn't. So because I didn't know that I couldn't, I tried. Right. But had I allowed somebody to convince me that I could, I wouldn't. Right. Did y'all get that? Yes, sir. I just didn't know that I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, I was just crazy enough to try anything. You know, I mean, you know, just give it a shot, you know. I, not that I knew that I could, but I didn't know that I could. And I'm glad I didn't let nobody convince me that I could. Because if I had a bought into what they thought, wait a minute, if you buy into what they think about you, you'd never get nothing done. Yes, Bishop. Yes, you know, and so, uh, you know, it was about six years ago, my wife and I was having a conversation. Because she had been in retail for over 20 years. And <clears throat> we were having a conversation. And as a matter of fact, I was ordering some clothes through her business, some personal terms. And uh, a couple of suits came in that I wore, and I was. I was unpacking them, and I don't know why, but that day, you gotta get this. I don't know why, but that day, you gotta get this. That day, as I was unpacking the two suits, I said to my wife, I said, you know, babe, I always wanted to own my own men's store. And she looked at me. She said, Will, you can talk about it, or you can be about it. That did something to me. When she said that, it came back to me that the first time I ever had a thought of owning my own clothing store was 1974. But somehow or another, I just you know, forgot all about it. I met Liz, you know, I guess. <laughs> Are y'all still with me? Yeah. You know, I mean, no, no wait a minute. Uh, my story is six years old this month. Amen. Glory. But the thing was still incubating in me. Now, I'm speaking very prophetically to someone right now because all of your life, you've been dealing with some stuff and going through some stuff and putting up with some stuff, but what you don't know, know or realize is God has been all this time training you for your own. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your own stuff. You, you know, you, you, you know, you just kind of, you, you know, you just kind of went on with your life, you, you know, you know, but now all of a sudden, the old folks used to say, I, I just got this powerful hinkering, hinkering, you know, I'm not able to dismiss it anymore. It's something, it's an itch that I can't scratch, you know. I, and, and, but the best Bible for this. In the book of Luke chapter 16. And, and Jesus was teaching. He said, if you're not faithful over that which is another man's, 
Who is it will give you that which is your own? Wait a minute. Makes sense. If you're not faithful over that, which belongs to somebody else, why in the world will my fidelity over something that belongs to someone else be the proving ground for me to get my own stuff? Right, right. Wait a minute now. So, 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 when Jesus is teaching this, my, this is just messing me up. Because I'm understanding now that every time I get opportunity to be faithful over something that don't belong to me, I'm being groomed for what is mine. Glory. Yes, sir. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. And so you, can, so, so, so you got to be very careful when you when 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 God attaches you to someone that has your prophetic destiny tied up in them. Amen. Yes, sir. Okay, be, 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 because the closer you get, watch this. The closer you get to what is yours, the more some still small voice will be whispering and saying stuff, trying to get you to separate from the very one that. And you gotta have just enough price in you to say, my brother, my sister, go ahead, do what you got to do. But as the Lord lives and my soul lives, I cannot be separated from this person right now. Don't ask me to explain it. Hey, we to that. You know, you, you know, can you imagine Ruth? Separate herself from them. Can you imagine David separating himself from Jonathan? A Jonathan separating himself from David? No. Nope. Come on now. See, that there is a principle of decreasing, so somebody else can increase. Are you, are you still with me? You know, uh, 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 you know. Jonathan understood that David was going to be the next king. And so he entered into covenant agreement with David. You know, they're out in the field and Jonathan, he takes off his sword and buckler. He takes his weapon. He takes off his coat and he passes it all to David. He said, now listen. He said, now listen. I need you to promise me that you show favor to my kind, my kin. The Bible said when David had subdued all of his enemies and God had gave him peace, he calls one of his servants by the name of them. He said, is there any left of the house of Saul that I may show them favor for the children's sake? He said, because I get into the agreement. He said, Jonathan, Jonathan prayed me to be in the palace. And I made them a promise. And now that I, I've taken care of my enemies and God has given me peace, I need to know, is there anybody left of Saul's house that I may show them kindness for Jonathan's sake? <laughs> and Zippa said, well, Jonathan has a crippled son. Oh, God, by the name of Mephibosheth, he found his Lord upon are y'all still with me? Yeah. Huh? I don't know who this is for, but can you imagine Elisha separating himself from Elijah? Wait a minute. Can you imagine children disconnecting himself from Moses? My wife and my kids, when they were children, told me, said, Dad, they hate you at the church. I don't understand why you keep going there. I said, son, I know it, but I cannot detach myself from the one that God has set me on. I got to stay here. I got to endure it. I can't quit right now. I can't. I got to be faithful over his defense. Are y'all still with me? And I didn't know back then what I know now. But something just wouldn't let me leave even what I wanted to leave. Come on now. Let's just be real. 
live. What really gets us in trouble is we tell ourselves yes when we should be telling ourselves no. But I learned to tell myself no when it came to me leaving before time.
come 400 stars and with 160,000 kernels, all from a single kernel. Some blessings are material, some spiritual. We don't always know what we need most, but God does. And a general spirit opens the floodgates of heaven. Glory. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Clap your hand again, God. <laughs> I, I still got about 10 million. Uh, look at your worksheet that I gave you. Look at your worksheet. Amen. Give us who please God. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. Look at your introduction. While Christians must not compete with each other in their service for Christ, they ought to consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work. Hebrews 10 verse 24. When we see what God is doing in and through the lives of others, we ought to strive to serve Him better ourselves. There is a fine line between fleshly limitation and spiritual humiliation. Amen. Oh God. And we must be careful in this regard. But a zealous Christian can be the means of stirring up a church and motivating people to pray, work, witness, and give. Isaiah's Christian. You can stir up folks to pray, to work, to witness, and give. Giving pleases God. For giving is of the very nature of God. God is the very one who has given the supreme gift to Lord Jesus Christ. The most loved passage of scripture clearly proclaims this glorious truth. And you know what it is, John 3, 16. Our lesson is that you will understand and apply the law of reciprocity to your life. My memory verse, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 through 11. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but water the earth, and make it to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the soil, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that in which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I said. To repeat the truth, give it pleases God. However, not every giver pleases God. This is clearly seen in this passage. Who then are the givers who please God? Clap your hands and give God praise. I want you to pay close attention to Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10. Look at that. I, I put that there for a reason. Notice something here. For the rain coming down and the snow from heaven. Now notice here what Isaiah says under the unction of the Holy Spirit. He said, listen, the rain and the snow comes down from heaven. And it comes down on a sand. Are y'all still with me? Amen. It's very important that you understand what the Word of God is saying. Now, most folks don't like the snow, but the snow is rich in nitrogen. <laughs> so when the rain comes down, it waters everything, but the nitrogen is needed to drink or something else. Are y'all still there? Notice what it does when it comes down. You know, it, and return it not to it. It don't go back until it waters the earth. Once it waters the earth, no real life, it makes it, it bring forth and bud. And it gives seed to the soil and bread to the eater. Notice how reciprocity works. And guess what? And some of the water is taken back up to heaven. Through the process of evaporation. Notice the cycle. Are you still with me? Jesus puts it like this. Kill. And men shall give unto your words of good measure. Press down. Shake it together. And run it over. Shall men give unto your words of Now we say that every Sunday. What we give you. Amen. I understand that 
given is an essential part of worship. When I kill, I give up my time, my energy, and my As a giver, I am subject to the economy of God. God. And not the world. Glory. As a giver, and black and poverty shall not possess me. Possess me. Oh, y'all know that stuff. Y'all know that stuff. Are y'all still with me? Amen. We say it every Sunday. I want you to get it down in your spirit. I want you to understand what real giving does and what real giving is all about. Can we say amen? Amen. You cannot be God giving. No matter how hard you try, you can't be God giving. It all belongs to Him. Don't make me prove it. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The Apostle Paul said, Who is it that has anything that wasn't given to? How in the world can we be a recipient of so much and we don't want to give? You, you know what? Every time I went to the door house, I knew I had to give. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? Uh, I, 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 I wasn't going up in there trying to wheel it to him, you know, because he, he wasn't budging. I never went to the living store trying to wheel it to him. At least, you know, back in the day, some of us, we didn't drink the cheap stuff. <laughs> I don't know why that was. Because I found out the cheap stuff will get you drunk just as quick. It's the expensive stuff. But, but we didn't want to be caught drinking the cheap stuff. We'll take the tent high and, and pour it in a kafasa say, wow, you know what I mean. Because <laughs> after a person gets drunk, they ain't going to know the difference. I'm trying to tell you something. That, you, you remember what we just read in the devotion? Man, yes. You know, because the son, the son is watching the mom and he's saying, you know, you know, that's a whole lot of thing to get with this money because mama's on 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 Maypop. Ties is slid and smart. Yeah. Y'all still with me. So if giving pleases God, then I gotta know what type of giving don't please God. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Watch this. So, so, so let us look, if you would please, at verse number one and verse number two. Okay? And I know I'm not going to finish this, but you got the worksheet. <clears throat> look at verse one and two. Okay? There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the same. For I know your eagerness to help. And I have been boasting about it to the Macedonian, telling them that since Last year, you and Acacia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm was stirred, has stirred most of them to action. Glory. Yes, sir. So, give us that please to God. First of all, point number one, they have a readiness and an eagerness to give. Amen. Now, notice what the Apostle Paul said. He, he talks about uh, those of the Macedonians. And what Paul is going to do, he's going to use the Macedonians to provoke the Corinthians to give, and then he's going to turn around and use the Corinthians to provoke the Macedonians to give. Because they were eager. Look at verse number two. The King James translation says, For I know the forwardness of your mind. The, 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 the NIV translation says, For I know your eagerness to help. The message Bible says, I know your own poor and ready to come. Glory. We bought this property in 2010. And in 2017, we paid it off. Amen. Because we were eager to give. Amen. Point blank. And I told the church something. I said, I will not ask for a sale until the church is paid off. <laughs> Are you still with me? Amen. I want you to understand. Givers that please God are eager, eager to give. Now keep in mind. There are always common orders out there. They are hollering. There's always somebody out for your money. So you can't just give indiscriminately. 
You got to listen to the Lord. The Holy Ghost will lead you when it comes to giving. Are y'all still with me? Amen. I sent some of you to a church one night and they hit you for three hours and going on four. I haven't sent you back. Let me tell you something. If I invite someone in to preach, before they get here, I already got that money together. I am not depending on what comes across the table to pay them. I don't roll like that. I don't operate like that. If I hire you, I'm ready to pay you. If we don't take a one time a penny, I got yours. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know, I, I, I don't have to wait for it to come in and count it up and say, now listen, I need everybody to give me five more dollars. No, baby, I got it. I got it. I, I, I already got it. My mind is made up. I'm going to pay you a thousand dollars for any penny coming. I already got the thousand dollars. That's just where I go. Are you all still with me? No, no, no. I, I don't have to do all this stuff. To, to, to get an offering together. I got it together before you get here. Hello? Hello. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so the Lord is looking for some folks that are eager to give. Does this make sense? Huh? And, and I know, oh God, this is, I'm out of time. But I, 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 let me just say a couple more things, see? Because, see, Giving has to do with stewardship. Okay? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about stewardship. And, and, and for everybody to think that they don't have enough, it's not about how much you got. It's about being a good steward of what you got. Right? And what you, the Lord paid close attention to stewardship. Glory. And if they would lock you up for robbing the liquor store, if they would lock you up for breaking in a bank, do you think for one moment that there's no consequences when it comes to robbing God? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, help us here. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. God is not like the IRS. See, the IRS don't trust you. And so the hour is going to take theirs off the top. Now you feel me? Sir. But God said, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bless you with a dollar and I'm going to trust you to give me a dime out of that dollar. And I'm not going to fight you to get it. And I'm not going to pay you to get it. But I have laws in place. And if you follow them, I will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. You won't even have room to receive your blessing. Are y'all still with me? Yes, Pastor. Does this make sense? Yes. Huh? And so it is imperative that you and I understand how the law of reciprocity works. can't say that without saying this. I refuse to be in one-sided relationship. I don't roll with folk where you're always a recipient and I don't get anything in return. So now I don't want you to miss this. Because when I give to you, there are no strings attached. As a matter of fact, when I give to you, it's not because I'm expecting anything from you. Amen. Amen. No, I don't grow like that. Because see, if I'm expecting something from you, then I can only receive based upon what you have. When I give to you, I'm expecting a return from the Lord of the harvest. Because he has resources that you know not of. Are y'all still with me? Amen. 
if I give them expecting from something from you, then guess what? I can all receive based on your limits and limitations. I'll roll it. When I bless folks, I bless them because God said bless them. And then God blessed me back. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Is this making sense? Yes, yes, Bishop. Give us that pleases God. They are eager, have a readiness to give. In other words, they're all in. It comes, it's about the things of God. If you got to always beg folks to do stuff, you got the wrong person. Come on now, come with it. Come on. Somewhere I'm in. I've been young and I've been old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken or the sick being broken. It's not that I'm too proud to be. I just don't have to. Why? Because I embrace God's principle. Glory. When it comes to stewardship. Amen. Amen. Is this making sense to you? Yes, See, sir. God don't want you to be in a place or in a position where you're always a day. You know, I, I heard some folks say something, and, and, and they mean well. They say, well, I'm just in between blessings. Not me. No. <laughs> I am never in between blessings. I am in the blessing. I am never in between blessings. I'm always in the blessing. You know why I'm in the blessing? Because God has blessed me to be a blessing. Are y'all still there? And, and so Paul said, now, I, I'm very much aware of your, 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 your eagerness to give. Uh, are you still with me? This is very, he expected the Corinthians to give. Why? Because some of the dear saints of God needed help. They needed help. And Paul expected them to give. Notice the terms, the saints there. You see that word? The same. It means those who are set apart and devoted to God. Why do you think I was talking to you earlier about insurance? Huh? Why you think? No. Well, see, listen. Uh, we are the church. We'll take care of our own. Hello. Amen. I just want you cannot be a part of two holders and be faithful to two holders and, and need something that can't get that. I don't roll like that. Right. Right. I, don't, I don't roll like that at all. No, no, no. I had one of the sessions shared to me with me a few months ago where pastors I said, no, call them, tell them to take, get it done. I got this. Amen. You're not going to be a part of two holders and be faithful to this ministry and find yourself in need and you scratching your head and you got to go to the world. You got to go to the pond shop. That devil is alive. I don't know about that. Don't roll like that. Are y'all still with me? Amen. I don't operate like that. Something is wrong when that's the way you roll. I am a blessing. I've been blessed by God to be a blessing. Yeah. Is this making sense? Yes. All right. I've got a record that's coming in. Let me just say, I got a few with one more, and I'm gonna let you go. Okay. But you gotta keep this and bring it back because I want to unlock some principle for you so that you will never ever again be in between blessings. No, I want you to be able to say, I am the blessing. I am the blessing. The blessing. The Are y'all still with me? Look at verse number three. But I am sending the brother in order that I was boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be read as I said you would. Paul was bragging on. Are you still with me? Look at verse number four. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. Paul said, I'm very confident in you. I 
I've been boasting about you. I know what you're working with. I know what you want to do. I know you're eager to do it. You're not worried. I ain't worried. I know you got this. Lord, help us here. Are y'all still with me? Uh, so point number two in the worship is this. Uh, they are not called unprepared to give. Givers that please God are never called unprepared to give. Amen. Givers that please God are never called unprepared to give. Let me say this no close. I realize Everything that God has blessed me with, He's blessed me so I can be a blessing. Amen. Yes. And because I am aware of that, I never call unprepared to kill. Uh, a few doors from my store is a great program. It's called the uh, Work to listen, Work for Success Program. They got men and women in that program that are being trained, being re-equipped to go back in to, to the job force. They, they're equipping them with skills, skills to be better parents and things of this nature. And so they was having a graduation. And so one of the guys running the place, they went down to the store. They said, Pastor, we, we need some jackets because the guy's got an interview. He said, but I don't know if I can afford uh, the stuff that you got here. I said, yes, you can. Don't say that, brother. Yes, you should can. And so we found a jacket to, to fit him. And then he said, so how much is a jacket like this cost? I said, if you, you want to know how much it costs, how much it's going to cost you? Because it's not going to cost you anything. And the guy couldn't believe me. He said, are you serious? I said, yes, and I'm serious. He got so excited. The next day he came back. He passed away. He said, this is my son. My son is getting ready to graduate. I want him to pick out something. This is how much I have I got. I don't know if it's enough. I said, it's more than enough. I had the kid to come in and pick out something nice. Because graduation is a big time in his life. And I made sure he was suited to do it. Are y'all still with me? Amen. I said, I told him the director of the place. I said, listen, I got some suits that I want to get. And so I donated 20 suits so that they're hammered there. Glory. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. See, the Bible is right. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Than to receive. Than to receive. Bless me to be a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And I know how to stay in position. See, everything God blesses me with is not for me. Sometimes God blesses me with messages that He won't let me preach. And I don't always like that. <laughs> I'm going on with you. Because he gave me some good stuff. And I thought it was for me. And he told me to give it to Pastor so and so and so. I have put together worksheets just like the ones that you got right now. But at the bottom of it, I put the name of another church and another pastor. Because it's not about where it came from. It's all about who gave it. And how could I give it if God don't give it to me? Amen. Listen. There are givers that pleases God. Every time you look at a point, I want you to say, and this is a giver that pleases God. And this is a giver that gives. See, givers that please God, they give much and reach much. Give the please God, they give deliberately and not grudgingly. Glory to God. Listen. Yes, sir. Trust God. Amen. With your finances. Yes, sir. No other financial system guarantees a hundredfold return but God. Glory to God, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. What they Jesus is preaching and teaching them. Jesus, the Lord. Him and the disciples, who can be saved? 
And you know, and everybody else, they was scared to say something. But Peter, you know, kind of like some of uh, they had to speak their mind. And Peter said, excuse me, but we don't have everything to follow you? Are you teasing like this? He said, Peter, no man <laughs> that has forsaken, that has forgiven, that has walked away from houses, land, mother, father, sister, brother, children. Except you get a hundredfold. I'm talking about now. Not in the understanding better by and by. He said, what you yield to me, I'm going to make sure you get a hundredfold return. And then eternal life. No other system can guarantee that. I don't believe in just giving indiscriminately. So, in order for you to understand what I just said, I got to say it another way. You got to discriminate when you give. That's what do you mean by that. I am not going to let you come up to me and take me for everything I got. Because you said the Lord said. Well, if the Lord said, I'm going to get a witness in my spirit because I got the Holy Ghost. with me? I'm going to say this in the more club. <clears throat> I was teaching about giving this old God over 10 years ago. <clears throat> and the young lady sitting right up there in the pews got so convicted. As a matter of fact, we was at another church 21st in California at that time. And she came up <clears throat> 400 and something. I think it was 435 dollars. She said, Pastor, this is my memory. I, I know the Lord want me to give it. I said, no, he don't. She said, Pastor, I really feel like, I just heard what you said. I really feel like I, the Lord is leading me to give this. I said, baby, that wasn't God. I said, what you was feeling was guilt because you hadn't been given according to what I've been teaching. I said, let me take some. I said, God hates covenant breakers. You enter into a covenant agreement with the landlord for this $435. I said, now if I allow you to give it to me, and I know what the Bible has said, now I'm being a partaker of your sin, and I won't be blessed. She said, but I haven't been tired. I said, I haven't been tired. I said, but you take this $435, and you're going to pay your rent. See, I didn't want her sitting at home saying, well, I gave my rent money to the Lord, so I know the Lord's going to pay my rent money. Right, right. No, he gave you your rent money to pay your rent. Right. And I'm just pastor enough to tell you that. Right. Hello? Amen, lights. No, God didn't tell you to give your car note to the church. And by the same token, he didn't tell you to take your tithes and pay your car note. Come on. I have the real order given to me by God to release you to pay your tithes later. I, I have that authority. Now the scripture lets us know that if any man redeem of his tithe, he is to give a fifth part when he brings it back. Because I don't want you sitting up in the dark. to help you. Does that make sense? Amen. And I want you to set up in the dark tomorrow. I paid my tithes. <laughs> now we run around here burning candles and the dog hit the table and knocked the flame over. Now he set the cooks on fire. That's what you're doing wrong like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen. It's hard. If you're faithful when it comes to tithing, you still need to be a good steward of what you have left. Amen. Because there are many folks that are faithful, they give the dime out of the dollar. But the 90 cents, they squander it. And then get mad at God. No. Tithing, giving, your money is all about stewardship. 
you got to be a good steward of what God has blessed you. That's by his. Father, I thank you for this teaching. You help us to understand you're calling us to be good stewards of what you blessed us with. Tonight, more than ever before, we embrace sound biblical teaching yes, when it comes to giving. Yes, In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Let the church say thank God and amen. God and amen. Clap your hands, give God praise. Okay, I borrowed from you five times, so please forgive me, amen, but I just need to get that out. Take this worksheet home and study it. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing y'all uh, Sunday.